All right, well, welcome to WRKO's 2013 Town Hall. And uh, we'd like to thank, first of all, the following sponsors for this event. WGBH, of course, and the entire staff, our presenting sponsor, the Mass Fire Arms School, and the participating sponsors, Perfect Smiles, and attorney Melissa Victor and Associates at attorneyforelders.com. But first, we're going to start with our distinguished panel here. Jeff Cooner, you're, the first question is going to go to you. We're talking, as Michael said, about sequestration. First of all, thank you all for coming here because I thought you'd be in your bomb shelters by now. <laughs> Are the roads working? Were, was everything fine? Was the water on? Or there was no disaster or anything? <laughs> Every drawbridge in the country is up. <laughs> no further notice. So thank you for, for getting through the sequestration to get here. I know it was a hardship for you to get here. Now, um, Jeff, uh, as you know, the president and the Republicans, they failed to reach a deal. And now, of course, the, the game of Washington finger-pointing has all begun, which we're all familiar with. This may be a softball question, but who is ultimately to blame for this failure, do you think, Jeff? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, I think both. I mean, if I'm yeah. really to be candid. Look, sequestration, and this was the point of Bob Woodward's book, and this is why people are asking me all the time, why would a left-winger like Bob Woodward who has been in the tank for the Washington media establishment going back decades, why would he go out and write an op-ed piece and stick his finger in the eye of the Obama regime? And the reason is obvious. When he wrote his book on the August 2011 budget deal, whatever you think of the book and whatever you think of the points made in the book, what Woodward shows incontrovertibly, and he speaks to Democrats who are involved in negotiations on the Hill, Republicans, who are involved in negotiations on the Hill, leading administration officials, the sequester was Obama's idea, L literally. He goes across from Boehner and he says, OK, John, if we don't get this grand bargain, I want mandatory budget cuts that will kick in. He's the guy who came up with the idea. He's the guy who sold the idea. His staff drafted the idea. He signs it. He owns it. So clearly, if he says the sky is going to fall, if he says we're going to have 800,000 people furloughed in the Pentagon, no firefighters, no cops, no food stamps, children won't have food, uh, planes are going to be falling out of the sky, uh, air traffic controllers are going to have to get laid off, three-hour waits at airports, if it's going to be a disaster, Mr. President, with all due respect, it's your deal. You signed it. So how can you go around and be blaming Republicans? Now, Republicans did agree. They did pass it. But my bigger question is this. We have a $1.2, $1.1 trillion projected budget deficit this year. We've racked up nearly $6 trillion in debt in the last four years alone. We are now staring at $17 trillion in debt. The IMF. The World Bank, international investors are telling us, America, Uncle Sam, you're going broke. You're going the way of Greece. So in a 3.5, I want you all to think about this, trillion dollar budget. This is the biggest budget in the history of the world. So to the Republicans, I'd say, we sent you to Capitol Hill to cut spending and not raise taxes to put the taxpayers of this country first. Stand up to them. Say, you know what, Mr. President? We want another $85 billion in cuts. Howie, what, do you my think? Answer. what do you think, Michael? Do you think Republicans have some blame for this? Look, I just want to say. Jeff, I was, a young, man. Man. I was a young man when your, your monologue started. <laughs> Go ahead, I Michael. think we've all heard enough of Jeffrey's <laughs> Koch brother Halliburton spin. You and I know who's responsible for the sequestration. You and I know who's responsible for the children without vaccines. Of course, it's George W. Bush. Everybody knows that. It's George Bush's fault. Fiscal cliff, George Bush's fault. The Hindenburg Bush, Titanic Bush, Howie's erectile dysfunction. It's all George W. <laughs> You have talked about it on the air, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, every other procedure on your body has been discussed on the air. I, you're the only person I know who I know the size and brand of their colostomy bag. I mean, I really, so, how it's all you, Bush's fault. And until like we get it, it's Bush's fault, I have the okay. solution. Right now, 
I say we put George Bush back in the White House so we can vote him out again. And if we vote him out another time, then maybe he'll finally fix it. Because George Bush, who has been president for five years, is, of course, responsible for what President Bush to, uh, Obama did yesterday. Of How, course. I, Howie, I? you're the voice of reason. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite part of Obama's statement to the press yesterday was when he said, you know, some people have been predicting apocalypse. <laughs> Who were these people, Mr. <laughs> President? Who, who, has been, who has been spreading fear and discord throughout the nation?